Let's consider the reaction of one mole of nitrogen gas reacting with three moles of hydrogen gas to yield two moles of ammonia, NH3. When learning stoichiometry for the first time in general chemistry, we assume the reaction goes to completion. That is to say, until the limiting reactant ran out and the reaction stopped. This does happen, but oftentimes the reaction proceeds until it reaches an equilibrium. When a system reaches equilibrium, we change the yield arrow into a double arrow to represent the equilibrium state. There are two ways to think of equilibrium. First, equilibrium is the state where the concentrations of the reactants and products do not change with time. Consider the graph of the concentration versus time for this reaction. Here, hydrogen is gold, nitrogen is red, and ammonia is blue. Notice that after the reaction begins, the concentrations of hydrogen and nitrogen decrease with time, and the concentration of ammonia increases with time as it is produced. The study of the change of concentration with time is chemical kinetics, which you can find several lectures and tutorials on this channel. Now notice what happens after some time period. It appears that the concentrations do not change with time. This is chemical equilibrium. It is important to note that the reaction is still dynamic. That is to say that the forward reaction and the backward reaction are constantly occurring. But the rate of the forward reaction is equal to the rate of the backward reaction. From a thermodynamic perspective, we can think of equilibrium as the point where the change in Gibbs free energy is zero. Recall from the study of Gibbs free energy, a reaction will be spontaneous when the change in Gibbs free energy is negative. Here is the classic example of a ball rolling down a hill. You can think of the left side as reactants and the right side as products. The ball is the reaction. The reaction, or the ball, closer to the left side, will spontaneously roll down until it stops at the minimum free energy. Similarly, the ball, or the reaction, closer to the product's side, will spontaneously roll down to the same minimum free energy. In both cases, the change in the free energy is negative. Then the ball stops at the minimum free energy and the change is then zero. This is chemical equilibrium, where the change in free energy is zero. In the next lecture, let's introduce the equilibrium constant and its meaning.